Hey everybody, so I wanted to go ahead and do my feed video so that you guys could see how I mix my grains and where I source it from and about how much it costs me to do so with a, um, it is 100% non-GMO, it's soy free, um, but my mix is only partially organic. So um, depending on what your budget is, I'll kind of go over that and kind of go over where I source some of my grains because some of it is local and some of it is not. So. Um, I'll also show you how I'm storing everything. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so this is what I have worked out for the mix that I'm doing. And uh, I'll go over this in a little bit more detail on where I get these numbers from um, later. But I wanted to show you first the measurements that I am making for a 50 pound mix. So I'm making 50 pounds of feed. It's gonna be 30% corn. 30% wheat, 20% peas, 10% oats, 10% fish meal, and 2% of the Nutribalancer, which I've worked out to be 1 pound, 5 pounds, 5 pounds, 10 pounds, 15, and 15 pounds. measured out 15 pounds of the corn and I have um, marked it with permanent marker um, where the fill line is so that I don't have to measure every time it will be accurate enough so there's my corn line and 15 pounds to remind myself all right so next we're gonna measure out the wheat this is a locally sourced product so it is non-GMO but it is not organic um, I had to keep my feed cost down and I could not afford to ship everything in so um, I did just go with a local whole wheat here is our wheat measurement we've marked that all the way around all right so next we're gonna measure out our peas and um, let's see our peas are going to be 20%, so we only need 10 pounds of the peas. And uh, this is what the ones I ordered look like. Um, I did get the cracked peas. There's all different colors in here. Um, these I also got. These are organic, non-GMO, all that awesome stuff. So... Um, Yes, this and the corn, both from New Country Organic, online. So these two things I did have to order, obviously. Um, I wanted to do the corn. I wanted to do the peas. Um, my local granary didn't sell peas at all. And because I'm soy-free, um, I wanted to have the peas in my mix so um, and I did feel like corn is a good option for chickens so I didn't want to eliminate the corn but I did want it to be organic and non-gmo um, which my local feed store does not sell non-gmo corn so that is why I ordered these two online and had to pay shipping and I will break down the cost of this including shipping for these two items and uh, I did order the Nutribalancer as well, and I'll go over all that at the end. All right, so here is our locally sourced oats. These are whole oats, and uh, these are not an organic product, but they are non-GMO. All right, so there it is, our final measurement. This is our oats, and uh, we only need five pounds of oats for this. But there is our lines. You can see five pounds of oats, 10 pounds of peas, and 15 pounds of corn and wheat. All right, so right here is my fish meal. And uh, yes, it is very potent smelling, but we are gonna need five pounds for this 50 pound mix. So this is what the fish meal looks like. 
This I am able to locally source, so I got this at my local feed store. And uh, they sell it either by the pound for um, $1.25 a pound, or you can get, um, I think, 50 pounds for $51. So it is a little cheaper if you buy it in a large quantity, which I will in the future, but right now I'm just not set up to store that much and you probably want an airtight container for this if you're storing it because the fish meal is very smelly. So keep that in mind before you go and get a huge amount of it. So here is um, the Nutribalancer. I'm using just a coffee can, an empty coffee can I had, and I measured out one pound of the Nutribalancer. Alright, so I've got all of my grains mixed, and um, they're just, ev just about evenly divided into two five-gallon buckets. And um, I've mixed it around, and I'll mix it again a little bit when I put it in the storage container I have um, out in the chicken coop. But um, I still have to mix in my Nutribalancer and the fish meal. All right, so this is the container that I'm using to store our um, already mixed grain in. So this is the same thing I showed in my pantry to, um, organization video that I store the, my dog food in. Uh, the dog food one is a 40 pound container and this one is a 60 pound container which is definitely gonna have a lot of space left with the 50 pounds of bird, the chicken feed. Um, it is, oh, I can't remember, it's supposed to hold almost 80 pounds I think of uh, bird seed. So I'll definitely have a lot of space in there for 50 pounds of the, the grains that I have. Uh, I am pretty sure that I could have just used a 40 pound one, but um, I wanted to just go ahead and get the big one. Um, eventually I'd like, I will probably store more grains. So um, I'm planning on, right now I just bought this one and uh, a smaller one that I'll show you here in a second. Um, so this one, the 60 pound one, um, I will store the already mixed grain and I'll, I'll write um, up here on the tag that it's already mixed and then I'm going to buy four or five more um, to store my extra grains that are not mixed so I'll get and I, I'll probably just get the 40 pound one I can't remember the price difference but if it's if there's a big price difference I'll get the 40 pound if it's about the same price I'll just get the bigger one for the sake of having bigger one um, but I will buy one for each of the grains so I'll buy one for the oats, I'll buy one for the wheat, I'll buy one um, for each product that I'm using and label it. That way it's nice and easy to mix and nice and rodent free, ant free, airtight, all of that. So I really like these containers. I've never had a problem with them. They always come in perfect condition. I get them on Amazon. This 60 pound one it is $25 on Amazon right now um, and it's prime. So it's super roomy and you can, you can set it, you know, this way, depending on your space and your needs. You can set them this way and you could stack them. They are stackable, they say, but some people I noticed in the reviews said that they didn't work very well to stack because um, if you have very much weight to them, then they, they start to put too much weight on the bottom one. So. Um, if you're doing light things and probably not filling them all the way, you could definitely stack them. Um, I believe I am going to have it like this in my coop. I'll show you when I get it in there. Um, but anyways, sorry for all the, the chit chat, but I wanted to just um, show you that. So I'm going to go ahead and pour my two grains of, uh, or two buckets of grains into there and get it all mixed up. And uh, once I get the lid on, I can just kind of toss this around to mix it up and I'll get it in the coop and show you my other container as well. All right, so I have all 50 pounds of the new mixed chicken feed into my 60 pound, or 
yeah, 60 pound container. This is supposed to hold 60 pounds of dog food, but chicken food, way more. So um, I could do another probably uh, 25 pounds of feed in here for sure, easily. Look at how much space I have. That's only about about up to here. So I could do quite a bit more. But the great thing about it being so big, I, I actually am liking it being this big because it's gonna be really easy to mix the grains right inside of this container. All right, so I've got the grains into the coop. And so for now, I just have this big tote that I'm going to store my extra grains in. Um, only the three fit, the oats don't fit in there. So I definitely have to order at least one of these containers right away. And uh, eventually I would like to get four more of these containers. Probably just the 40 pound would do it. So probably get four more of the 40 pound dog food storage containers. And those would fit great right here under the nesting boxes. So um, I'll just put the lid on that and slide it down back underneath the nesting boxes. Then I have the already mixed grains here. And um, I'll store those buckets up on top of the other thing here in a second. Um, so I've got the oats here that didn't fit in the container. Definitely going to order at least one more container right away. Um, and this is the other container I was telling you about um, that I got. It's made by the same company. Uh, $14 for this, and it's way bigger than what I really need. I told my husband I needed to return it because it has dog paws on it, and it should have chicken feet. But he didn't agree. So, <laughs> so anyways, I got this to actually store the Nutribalancer. The Nutribalancer comes in 10 pounds or 60 pounds, and I didn't think that I needed... Man, 60 pounds would last me a really long time with only 8 birds. So I got the 10 pounds, which should last me approximately 10 months or so is what my estimate is. So um, this is rated for 15 pounds of dog food, and I thought, well, 10 pounds of the Nutribalancer, it'll be good, right? Well, I, I didn't take into account um, the actual, that what I'm putting in there is powder, so there's, I knew as soon as I received the container in the mail it was going to be way too big for my purposes, but that's okay because um, I'll just store the Nutribalancer in here, um, keep it in the container, or the, you know, the bag that it came in, and then I have enough room I could get another five pounds of fish meal and just store the fish meal in here as well and keep it in its bag. That way that's one less thing I have to pick up next time at the feed store. So I'll probably store both the Nutribalancer and the fish meal in this. So that'll be perfect and it's airtight so it won't smell like the Nutribalancer stinks too. So the fish meal and the, the Nutribalancer, the stink won't, it's airtight so it won't make the coop smell horrid. And I will just store that um, on top of one of when I get the other when I get the other thingy majigs. These containers, I'll have one down here at the end, and I will store this right on top of it. So that'll be perfect. All right. So here is what I'm using for my feed mix. So let's go over this in a little bit more detail. I will try not to bore you too much. So. <clears throat> I am mixing a 50 pound mix. I figured that that would be um, a little over a month supply for my eight chickens, but uh, we will see how that goes. I'm planning to feed a quarter to a half a cup of grain per chicken. So um, with my eight chickens, I'm estimating I'm going to be feeding about four to six cups a day to um, in total for all eight birds. So we will see how that goes, if they need more, if they need less. Um, so that will be a trial and error thing that um, as they grow, what that's going to look like all summer long. They're going to be free ranging outside, so we want to feed them in the morning, let them eat as much grain as they want throughout the day mixed with their um, you know, um, free ranging outside, eating the bugs and the plants and all of that that they have plus any table scraps and greens that we have from the house as well. 
So um, all in all, the grain is more of a um, something to keep them full and something to give them energy while they're doing what we really want them to do, which is foraging in the outside and eating um, greens and live bugs and all of that. So, um, of course, in the winter that may change a little bit, obviously, because we, we will have table, stri table scraps still, but we will not have, obviously, they won't be able to free range out and get them bugs. But anyways, let's go back to this worksheet. Now, um, right away I will tell you, everything I got is non-GMO. That was the main purpose of me mixing my grains, is I wanted to get a non-GMO and organic, if I could, um, mix. And I also, my second reason to why I wanted to do um, the grains this way, with a whole grain, instead of just going and buying a mix is because um, I, I feel like the natural thing and the healthiest thing for the birds is to eat a whole grain, not something that's left over from other processes, that's swept up off the floor, that's, you know, um, got half of its nutrition is gone and then it's pounded into these little tiny pellets and the nutritional value is nil, even in an organic pellet. I just don't believe that that's the way God intended, a, you know, an animal to eat or a human to eat, that we should all have whole in its natural form plants and meats and, and all that stuff. So you get what I'm trying to say. So um, I did have to source a couple things out of my local range. So the New Country Organic, I believe it's just newcountryorganic.com or something like that. Um, I'll leave a link to their website below, but I did order the corn, which is organic and non-GMO, and the peas, which is organic and non-GMO. I ordered 50 pound bags, so I did have to pay shipping on that, which I have broken down here. The estimate for shipping for the corn for one 50 pound mix, um, for this mix, is just under $8, and the shipping per 50 pound mix for the peas is just under five. Um, now, that is not what I paid in shipping, but that is broken down into a 50 pound supply mixed. So I ordered them in 50 pound bags, but I only needed 50 and 10 pounds. So I won't have to pay shipping again for a while. So broken down into this month, kind of monthly supply, is what I'm paying about eight and five dollars in shipping per month is about the breakdown. Um, hopefully that makes sense to you. So I'm guesstimating that this 50 pound mix is gonna last my eight birds right around just over a month long. So um, my dog is out there going crazy. So 50 pounds for me uh, just over a month. So these are basically um, what I added up to be my monthly cost, okay? So the corn is costing about six ninety a month. The wheat two seventy. The peas four eighty. The oats ninety cents. The fish meal five twenty, and the NutriBalancer about four dollars. Then factored in with the shipping estimates, I'm looking at. $37.25 for a 50 pound um, mix of feed. Now, that is, I would say, a little bit higher or right around the same price depending on the brand of organic pellet feed that you're going to pay at the feed that, you know, um, your supply store, wherever you're getting your grains. So, you know, if you shop at Murdoch's or Tractor Supply or Farm and Home, any of those stores, you're going to be looking at, I know we paid the organic feed that we started them on, which is like a crumble, um, and it had soy in it, which I don't like. So, um, you're talking $27 for that, let's see, 40 pounds. So $27.99 for 40 pounds for the starter crumble I got versus $37 for 50 pounds. And these are whole grains and these are soy free 
and mostly organic, 100% GM, um, non-GMO. So um, I know that some of the, I think like Purina and, and those, which are not even super reliable companies in my opinion, you're going to be paying right around um, 34 to 36 or so dollars for a 40 pound bag. So um, correct me if I'm wrong. Let me know what you guys spend in your area if you're buying organic feed. Um, let me know what, what you pay for a 40 or 50 pound bag. I know all of the ones here local seem to come in 40 pound bags. So um, let me know what you guys are using if you're um, looking at switching. I'd be interested to know. So anyways, um, so that is approximately, like I said, we'll see how much they eat as they grow. They are still small. They're not full grown yet. So um, we'll see how much they actually are going to be eating. But um, I'm estimating that it's going to be right around, like I said, a quarter cup to a half a cup a day per chicken. I think they're really interested in looking at my dog out there. My two dogs are out there. So, um, anyways. <clears throat> so, I'm guesstimating this will last me. I broke it down to how many cups are in a pound and all that. Uh, hopefully my math is right. So, I, anyways, I estimated at that, um, at that amount of feed. 33 plus days that it, a 50 pound should last me, which I broke down into approximately a dollar 13 per day, and that is probably going to be my max. It may be less. Now, I plan on fermenting the grains, so um, when you ferment, your grains expand. They're broken down so that the, the chicken can process all of the nutrients within the seeds as well so um, all in all it's gonna save on my feed bill as well fermenting the grains so um, probably just over a dollar a day to feed them and I could be getting up to eight eggs per day um, we have good layers here so these breeds are, are, I mean, the Americana is probably going to be laying the least amount of eggs for us. But we've got the Leghorn, we've got these sex links, and our past sex links, they laid like crazy. Um, they, it was like a daily thing. We, it was incredible, which is why we got three sex links this time, um, because we really loved them. They were excellent layers. The Americana, I know they lay a little bit less, but I got her more because I wanted some blue eggs, and I think she's just beautiful. So, um, then we've got the Rhode Island Red, and we've got Sweetie down there, our Bard Rock, and yeah. Then we have the Australorp, which is our first Australorp, Daisy up there. Um, so, but I know that I've heard that they are great layers as well, and super nice birds. So anyways, so I'm spending approximately, the estimate here is that um, I will be spending about $37.25 a month, but I'm not buying monthly. I'm buying in bulk. So let's look at what my, and if you're looking to switch, um, you know, you, the initial investment can hurt a little bit because you have to stock up on these grains and you're buying these grains in bulk. So I might be, you know, mixing it for one month, but I have enough, I have 200 pounds of grains here. So, um, of course the initial investment is going to be higher. Plus I needed to buy all of my storage containers to, to keep them in, which is why I only bought the one and the small one currently because I didn't want to spend two, three hundred dollars on, on, the containers at the same time that I'm spending money on the grains and uh, so anyways let's look now at our um, initial cost here all right so my initial investment I paid um, all of these grains I bought in 50 pound bags so it was $23 for the corn 
and $9 for the wheat, $24 for the peas. Now remember the corn and the peas are organic, everything else is just non-GMO. So the oats is $18, then the fish meal was $6.25. That could be cheaper if I bought it in bulk, but I only bought it in the five pounds that I needed. If I got it in 50 pounds, it would be a little bit less. Um, so yeah, then the Nutribalancer was $40. So um, obviously I only need a tenth of, of what I bought, so. Um, four dollars a month, but it was forty dollars to start off, which was pretty expensive um, Then I had to pay shipping my shipping total for the 50 pounds of corn 50 pounds of peas was forty seven dollars and eighty two cents Oh, that kills me if I could source those two things locally Look at how much money I would be saving By not having to pay that I would be you know saving again about thirteen dollars every month I could save if I didn't have to pay that shipping cost. That really hurt as my initial investment. That really hurt. Um, so just with the grains and all that, my initial investment was $168. <sighs> so I didn't want to go out and buy a ton of containers. So um, I estimated I was going to, okay. So I wrote it down that I was going to get five 60 pound storage containers at 20 about just about $25 a piece it was gonna be $125 just for those storage containers and then I wanted the one smaller the 15 pound one for that so my total would have been over just over $300 for my initial investment and uh, I didn't want to do that my husband has plans um, and projects that he wants to build and he's always sacrificing what he wants to do so that I can get the stuff that I want, and I didn't want to to do that to him. So, <laughs> although the eggs are for him too, um, so I thought, you know what, to to lessen this heartbreak of shelling out all this much money, I'm just gonna get the one container in 60 pounds. I'll use it for my 50 pound mix, and I'll see how the size fits, and then I will buy more after. So I only bought the one for $25 instead of all five. Um, <clears throat> so anyways, it is an initial investment, but it is, to me, so worth it. Alright everybody, so that's it for this video. I think I covered about everything that I meant to, but if there was something I didn't cover, please feel free to ask questions in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer all of them. Um, Hopefully that helped you out. I would love to hear from you guys if you do a similar mix or if you have some great sources to um, where you source your grains from. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. I would really appreciate it and I would love to hear from you guys. So I will see you in the next video. Bye!